Guys, how we doing? Welcome to GoodWorks Tractors. Today we are going to review a 4 series tractor or maybe a Grand L series tractor, basically the largest frame size of compact tractor that you can purchase today. This is part of a series I kind of started a while back covering how you select the right tractor for you to begin with. Then I did a little bit deeper dive into a John Deere 1 series tractor or a subcompact tractor. Right now we're going to kind of flip the script, go to the biggest compact tractor size you can get. You see right here a John Deere 4066R, it's my own personal tractor, uh, same as a 1025R in one of the previous videos. I do intend to get to similar reviews or pros and cons of each series, including the 2 series and the 3 series as well, maybe even some other variations. If you like what you see here, if you find it helpful, consider giving a thumbs up maybe even a thumbs down, and also hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. And if you want more information on a tractor like this or to see what's available on my website, whether it be a tractor or an attachment that you can put with a tractor, read through that description below, all sorts of helpful links down there, or go to goodworkstractors.com. Let's go ahead and get price out of the way first. I don't want there to be any sticker shock, but even if I tell you I don't want you to have sticker shock, you're still going to. These things are expensive, all right? You're getting a big machine for a reason, but that comes with a lot of benefits as well. You're going to have a lot of awesome features and options that are not available on smaller tractors. So depending on the applications that you're uh, looking to purchase a tractor for, the different kinds of jobs you have around the house, the farm, commercially, whatever it is, even if you want to do it in comfort, like with a cab like this, whether it's the summertime or the wintertime, Smaller tractors like that 1025 or a 2 Series on John Deere are not going to have a factory cab option available. you got to get to a bigger tractor, a 3 Series or a 4 Series in this case, to get something with air conditioning and heat. So I hate talking pricing because these videos are out there forever and it's going to fluctuate over time, but I want to give you a couple of points of reference here to kind of keep it in mind a little bit. So first of all, the difference between an open station and a cab tractor. An open station just remove the cab, pretend it's not there, there's just that big roll bar uh, instead in this place. You're gonna save about eight, maybe $10,000 by not having a cab and getting that open station instead. I can tell you as we get into the winter months though, I'm really happy that I have the cab. Now this is actually my second John Deere 4066R that I've chosen to keep for myself. I am in the business of buying and selling equipment, and so I made a very poor decision <laughs> on selling the first 4066R that I had last spring. Part of that was kind of tied to we were going to be moving at that point. I wanted to free up some cash, but it's been my favorite tractor, and I pretty much instantly regretted selling it. So what did I do? I searched, I searched, I searched, and I found another one set up just like it, and that's what you see right here, the 4066R, the biggest hydrostatic machine you can get on the market today. So to give you a couple price points, knowing they're gonna change over time, the tractor I had set up like this, I sold in the spring for I think it was $44,000. That's used, that's 250-ish, maybe 260 hours on it. And we also have the Kubota version in an open station, the Kubota Grand L 6060, available right now with a lot of remotes, a lot of options on there. It's also used a few years old with about 120 hours on it, available for 35,000. We just did a video on that Kubota, that L 6060, because it had so many amazing hydraulic options on it. I'd encourage you to check that out. So, open station or cab, depending on the remotes, the other options that are on there, you're, you're just spending a lot of money either way. So just prepare for that. And that's just for the tractor itself. I always say that's only part of your budget, right? You might need a trailer. You're going to need other attachments, a brush hog, a grapple, a snow pusher, whatever it is. So plan accordingly when you're planning for the future, right? You know, you have the tractor cost and the other components that go into that. So the overarching theme is going to be price, all right? So what do you get for that price? That's what we're going to dive into next. However, it's not all good news. There's always trade-offs to be made. So there's going to be a sacrifice here and there, even on a machine like this. All right, let's take a closer look. I'm going to hit you with a piece of bad news right away, all right? I almost don't want to tell you this, but these do not come with a mid-PTO. You can't put a belly mower on here. Now, for me, I think that's not a big deal, all right? However, I've been asked repeatedly, you got one with a mid-PTO, over and over. Where's the mid-PTO? Can I put a belly mower on it? That kind of thing. You can't do it on a 4 Series tractor. However, there is a caveat, okay? I actually did a unicorn video there, oh, I don't know, a few months ago, about a John Deere 4720. First time I'd ever seen one. I ended up buying two of them that were set up the same way. The older generation of this machine right here had a mid-PTO on it for a short period of time. Apparently, it wasn't very popular, so they did away with it. I got two machines in, cab, loader, belly mower, 
which had the mid PTO. It was pretty sweet. So when I say it's not available, well, technically it was a long time ago. And if you're looking in the used market and you look for years and years and years like I have, you may end up finding one. However, they really are just about as rare as a unicorn. So for all intents and purposes, there is no mid PTO option on one of these tractors. Don't worry, you are still gonna have a rear PTO on these machines to be able to hook up a pull type or a, a three-point finish mower, okay? For those areas you're gonna mow on a weekly basis or a brush hog, anything else you wanna put in the back, like a tiller, all that kind of stuff. However, you cannot run a front mount snowblower on these, all right? Unless you go the crazy expensive option of getting a hydraulic power pack that uh, comes off the back here, runs off the, the rear PTO. You have hoses that go all the way front up to a uh, loader mounted snowblower. I mean, we're talking the price of a car, basically, to get that system. I mean, you know, a cheap car, but a car. So you can't run a front mount snowblower for all practical purposes or a belly mower on these machines. Now I know you're going to ask, but this will be covered in a future video on a 3 Series tractor, but the 3R Series, the John Deere 3R, the Kubota Grandel, and the smaller frame size is going to be the largest machine that's available with the mid-PTO. It's not going to be standard. That doesn't mean it's standard. It just means it's available to get on that series there. So I'm sure that comment's going to be down below, so I want to give you that answer up front. Now I want to take a few minutes to go over my favorite features on this tractor here and why I keep coming back to the John Deere 4R Series. One of my favorite things about the 4 Series frame size is going to be the loader and its capabilities, its capacity. It can lift just whatever I need it to do. You know, I've done a lot of trial and error. I find myself constantly moving up, moving larger in machine that I need to have in order to kind of tackle jobs here at the shop, in the field, wherever it is. I can comfortably pick up 2,000 pounds with this tractor, offload trailers, move big heavy pallets of stuff around how, whenever I need to, really. So, I had a 3046R for a long time. You guys might have seen, I've done a handful of videos on that on my channel as well. Absolutely loved that machine. The thing that was lacking for me in two areas was loader capacity, liftability, which is really, that's gonna be specific to the operator, to your needs, and then also stability, side to side. You finally start to feel stable in a machine that's this large. So this tractor here is about six foot wide, a full foot wider than a three series tractor. With that, with that width, <laughs> with that width, <laughs> you get a lot more natural side to side stability. You know, even small hills start to really uh, not become so much of an obstacle compared to most of these smaller tractors are kind of skinny and long. So this is a little bit more, I feel like, proportional on the width and the length where it kind of matches up a little bit better. However, the trade off for having that additional width plus the size, the overall size of the machine, the loader capacity, are gonna be a lot more expensive attachments. As you might be able to tell by taking a look at this snow pusher on the front end of my tractor right now. So it just makes sense that attachments for tractors this size need to be built bigger and beefier because there's a lot of weight that's behind there or in front of it, either way. But you got a lot of power there and these attachments have to withstand that. That's really gonna drive the price up. So attachments are gonna cost you more now there is a bit of good news though, okay? So if you want to get into this frame size of a tractor, maybe because you need the front end loader capability or you need the PTO requirement or the three point lift capacity, for example, you can get into the 4M series, a basic 4 series without a lot of the bells and whistles, and you're gonna save quite a bit of money doing so. Things like the 4044M, 4052M, 4066M, okay? There's an M and an R variant in the John Deere 4 series, kind of the standard or plain Jane, if you want to call it that, versus the premium or the deluxe. And those numbers do mean something. The 4044 and the 4066, for example, 44 horsepower, 66 horsepower. So again, you have a big range within there. You're still going to have the same exact lift capacity on the front end and on the back end. That's not going to change no matter which horsepower requirement. You're going to have more oomph, you know, if you're traveling with a lot of um, full bucket loads, maybe up and down hills, or if you're planting stuff or you have uh, tilling going on on the backside and you have a lot of heavy uh, requirements, ground engaging requirements that are going to require more horsepower, maybe you want to step that up to the higher horsepower capacity of machines or maybe you just shrink the implement size a little bit to match accordingly. So considerations beyond the tractor itself. You need to consider storage, okay, so this thing right here with the cab on it, it barely, barely fits underneath an eight foot door like what I have out here at the shop. I've done a video, of course I have, showing how it just barely fits, but it does, okay? So that's a nominal eight foot. I think it's, oh, I think 94 and a half inches tall or 94 inches tall right around there. It's a snug fit. 
maybe let a little air out. I added liquid ballast in here, which adds a lot of weight, and then you can also lower the air pressure at the same time, and so it shortens it just enough. However, if you have the open station version with just the steel ROPS bar, that ROPS bar is foldable unless you get one of the early generations of the 4M series, which is a fixed bar. But if you get one that has a foldable uh, hinge in it, so just take a look at pictures and see if that's what you're looking at, this will actually fit right underneath a seven foot standard height garage door. But on that topic of weight, if you have loaded tires like what I have here, that makes a heavy machine even that much heavier, all right? So we're talking roughly 6,000 pounds, give or take, in that ballpark with the loader, the cab, the loaded tires. So if you plan on trailering your machine, that's gonna put you well beyond just a regular landscape tandem axle trailer. You know, and even if you wanna have a lot of comfort, perhaps even beyond a 10,000 pound rated trailer if you're gonna carry some attachments with you. You don't wanna push it, you don't wanna be borderline, and a 10,000 pound GVWR rated trailer, you still have to subtract the weight of the trailer. So if your trailer weighs 2,500 pounds, that means you can only safely carry 7,500 pounds. So 6,000 pounds sitting here, plus a couple other attachments, you're pushing that limit. The maintenance costs for larger machines like this 4 Series here really aren't that much more expensive than their smaller counterparts. The reason being is there's just not that many interval cycles that you have for maintenance. You know, you're still doing an oil change and a fluid change every 200 hours. You want to keep it greased periodically depending on your usage. Check your air filters, of course, all the standard stuff. But overall maintenance is still relatively cheap. Of course, there's more fluids, you know, larger filters, so it's going to cost a little bit more. When you get into repairs, again, same kind of concept there. You know, if you have a seal on here, seals are pretty cheap. It's still going to be labor, you know, if you're taking it into a dealer to have that repaired maybe a little bit more labor compared to a smaller one, but overall maintenance, repair costs, not substantially more than the smaller counterparts. Let's talk about some cool features that are found on the larger tractors like the 4 Series. Some of these are available on the 3R Series and maybe on the 5 Series, but they're not gonna be on the subcompacts and typically not on the 2 Series either. So you can add on a lot of hydraulic options to these larger tractors. They have larger hydraulic systems which gives them more capability and capacity. On this one here I have a third function, a fourth function, and a fifth function. Don't worry, I've done all sorts of videos just on hydraulics and trying to explain them further, so check those out on my channel. You're going to see a top and a tilt kit, hydraulic top and tilt, that are tied into the fourth and the fifth function as well. Even a cool feature that's kind of a standalone just on the 4 Series as far as I know, which is called Hitch Assist. This little combination of a panel right here and a knob right here allow you to actually slowly back up the tractor or move the tractor forward from off of the operator seat, standing right here. I mean, it's like creep mode, okay, on, on, on a crazy level. You're moving like an inch a minute, it feels like. So you got to kind of back your tractor up, get it close to what you want to hook up to. You don't need to have a quick hitch on there. You can lower it down. I'll lower this actually right here, uh, just so you can see with this control. Now if the tractor was on, so there was hydraulic um, power going to it, you could actually raise it back up and then it allows you to a lot or a lot more easily connect to three-point attachments. You'll also see what you have here, these telescoping draft links. You just pull a pin out and then if you didn't have stuff connected to it like I do right now, you can see these two sections here just slide over top of one another and if you didn't have a quick hitch, you can easily manipulate a three-point arm here and then once you have it hooked up to your attachment, find that right spot there, put it back through and lock it in place. I've talked about this little pin right here as well. Looks pretty innocuous, but you can actually pull this out and rotate it 90 degrees. This has uh, two different positions here, a long flat way this way. You can rotate it 90 degrees and so it'll go up and down this way. Gives you another float function and independent float control left to right on a three-point attachment if you want to follow the contour of the ground a little bit more. Something else that's really cool you can get on the 4 Series, but now you can actually get it on the 1 Series and the 2 Series, but not the 3 Series go figure, is a self-leveling loader or an MSL loader. Tractor Time with Tim has done some cool videos on those as well. I wish I had one on this tractor. Basically, as you raise the loader up, it just, the way it's designed keeps like your forks or your bucket level. So that bottom edge or those forks don't start to rock back as you're raising. They just continuously stay at flat. It's a really cool feature to have. It's something you can get on the 4 Series. I'm getting chilly, so let's take a look inside this cab. One of the big complaints from tractor owners of smaller subcompacts and compacts are going to be seat options or maybe the lack of seat options. 
the four series tractors and the three R. Okay, you can get an air ride seat. It's going to have the suspension seat that's standard, but you can get an air ride seat as an upgrade. It's expensive. Everything is on these machines. All right, but it's an option there. It's really nice to have. I used to think it wasn't really worth the money. However, with time, I've really noticed a difference when I kind of hop back and forth between machines that have that traditional suspension seat versus the air ride seat. Some basic models don't even have an actual suspension. You basically have a, a couple rubber little stops almost that give a little bit of cushion. That's about it. The four series tractors are going to come with a standard three range transmission, high, medium, and low, available most commonly with a hydrostatic transmission, but you can get a power reverser sort of a, a version of an old school gear drive but i've done a video on it to explain it further it's a little bit cheaper it's not going to be as convenient as a hydro machine but typically you're going to get a little bit more power to the ground with the power reverser i want to give you a list just kind of go through it really quick here of options features that are found on these machines here but the cab version you can get a radio on here air conditioning heat front work lights rear work lights front wipers rear wipers they're going to be standard with selectable two or four wheel drive, locking rear differential, power steering. You're going to have headlights, cruise control. They've got a lot of really cool features. It's called motion match, load match, speed match, which are just kind of settings that I think most of us will set to an initial setting that we want. Maybe monkey with it at a time or two just to make an adjustment and then it's set there for life for the most part. So this is really a good solid introduction to what the 4 Series is all about. It's probably going to miss some stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I forget things all the time, but it's going to give you a good starting point. If you have a 4 Series tractor, we would love to hear your feedback down below. The things that I miss or the features that you love that maybe I didn't mention or things that you like about it that are different than I like about it or that you hate about it. Leave those thoughts below. And if you're looking for one of these tractors, it'd be great if you would also comment below and we can respond to you and help each other out. And if you're in the market for a tractor or an attachment to fit your tractor, goodworkstractors.com. I can help you out, happy to do so. We ship all across the country all the time. Well, if you found this video helpful, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you or even a thumbs down. Just some feedback is good to know. And also consider hitting that subscribe button right down there as well. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.